Right, so now that we can cover the type of motion that we have based on the trend of the slope the tangents, we can go a bit further and be more playful with it, if you will. So here we have two position versus time graphs, and we're going to be looking at how to represent motion in an alternative way. And remember, what I'm drawing here are baby tangents, which are just cute little tangents along the curve. So as you can tell, in the first one, the slopes are getting steeper and steeper, which means this is actually speeding up. And we can further try to represent the numbers of the slopes. And again, we have no axis, so we're just going to do our best to represent it with a number that makes sense. So if you notice here, it is more or less not so steep, so let's give it a value of 2. And what are the units of slope? Well, the y is meters, the x is seconds. So when we have the slope is rise over run, in other words, meters per second, which is the instantaneous velocity, velocity. Then it, could, it gets steeper with time, so this could be 4 meters per second, 6 meters per second, 8, 10, 12. Now we can confidently say, okay, this object is speeding up, and because the slopes are all positive, it is speeding up in the positive direction. We can do the same thing for the second one here, and in this case, we can just look at the trend, and notice that the tangent lines are getting less and less and less steep. So we can confidently say, it is slowing down. But we can do better. Let's just put some numbers so that way we can see it in a numerical way. When it starts out very steep, let's give it a number of 12 meters per second. And because it gets less steep with time, we can go 10 meters per second, 8 meters per second, 6. And notice that the top is more or less flat, so we can approximate it to 0 meters per second. Now, once we've done this, it got quite confusing because we need to have a slope legend in order to have more information. But we're going to do something really, really exciting. And we're going to draw an axis right below this graph. Now this axis is drawn such that the time axis is going to line up nicely. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. We know that at, at this specific time, let's call it a one second, what was the velocity of the object? 2 meters per second. So at the 1 second mark, this is going to line up nicely to 1 second. At the 2 second mark, this will line up 2 seconds. And so on. So I'm going to keep on going for the rest of them, okay? Okay, so now that we lined up the time axis, this axis we have defined for the y axis. Well, what are we interested in looking? We're looking at the trend of this position time graph, but it got confusing, we have to draw tangents. So there's going to be another way to represent, which is just considering how the velocity is changing with time. So what we're going to put along the y axis is actually our slopes, or in other words, the instantaneous velocities which have units of meters per second. What we can do then, at the one second mark, how fast was the cheetah going? It was moving at two meters per second. At the two second mark, how fast was the object going? Four meters per second. At the 3 second mark, how fast is the object going? And we could keep doing this for the rest of them. Alright, so here we have a few points, and this is just representing how the velocity is changing with respect to time. And as you can see, this does exactly the velocity at 1 second, at 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, and so on. But we can follow a trend. So if we are to have a line the best fit, we can see so 
that this is a linear graph. This is another way to represent the motion of an object through a velocity time graph. And how do we get it? Well, we just take the slopes of the precision time graph at one moment in time, we plot them, and then we can approximate them through a trend line. So a line of best fit. Uh, a bit confusing, so let's try to see if we can do it in a second way, this time a little bit faster. Okay, so you can see when I'm going a little bit faster, I, I, I overthink and I'm going too quick in my mind. So actually, I need to slow down a bit. So my velocity should decrease. All right, so what we're trying to do from a position time graph, we approximate the tangent. Well, you can do much better if you have a calculator and a ruler and then you can actually calculate it nicely. But what we do, we go to line up our axis perfectly so that way the time axis are going to line up for a specific second that we're looking at. So let's say we want to find out, A, how fast is the object going at the one second mark? So it's going 12 meters per second. How fast is the object going at the two second mark? It was going 10 meters per second. How fast is the object going at the three second mark? It was going at eight meters per second. So we're going to continue doing this for the whole relationship here. All right, and now that we have, my, my line is not so nice, but the trend, you can more or less see that it starts off fairly steep and it's going to be a line going downwards. So actually at this point, I got messed up here on the scale. But the main idea is that it is more or less a linear graph. So I'm going to show you other examples how to draw it. Uh, the last one wasn't as nice as I wanted it to. But the main idea is that now we can represent velocity in a new way through a velocity time graph. And in this case, you can see that velocity starts high, and as you move forward with time, that velocity is decreasing, so the object slows down. In this case, which we said it was speeding up, that velocity starts off slow, and it's going to get higher as you move forward with time. So I'm going to show you a bit more analysis and maybe not so complicated with all these uh, dots everywhere and then that way you'll get a better example, right?